All right. Thank you so much for joining me today for one of our daily Design Innovation Month webcasts. Uh, my name is Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the application engineers with computer-aided technology. And while typically I always host these webcasts, I also get to provide today's content for today's webcast, which is uh, a few tips for our tables in our SOLIDWORKS drawings. So before we get into a handful of tips that I've tried to bring together, I'll just mention our standard housekeeping items. Uh, the webcast is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the CATI YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and send that link out in the chat here. Definitely take a look at that link. That's where all of our webcasts go. Uh, they'll all be set up in a playlist for Design Innovation Month 2019. Uh, but give us a couple days to process the video before we get, uh, get it uploaded. Uh, everyone's audio is muted. That way we can get hopefully the best quality audio stream uploaded to YouTube. So please keep yourselves muted. Any background audio, any noise, doors, dogs, what have you, it will all get captured and be forever ever captured in the audio stream. So I think with that information taken care of, we can go ahead and talk about some of these tips. Now I will admit this is, uh, this is going to be fairly short. It's also a, kind of a stab in the dark type of a topic. Kind of curious to see how well, how well it goes talking about one specific type of functionality in SOLIDWORKS and really nothing else. So I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about our tables in our SOLIDWORKS drawings. Um, you know, there's a lot of different tables that we can create. Bill of materials, I would imagine we're all fairly comfortable with them. Um, I imagine we're probably all fairly comfortable with most of these tables. My intention is maybe show you a couple things that you didn't know you could do in a table or, you know, you just forgot about possibly. Um, but there are also hole tables if you've got a part with dozens and dozens of holes. They're very easy to use. Of course, the good old weld cut list. If you build any type of welded frame design in SOLIDWORKS, you're probably quite familiar with that. For sheet metal users, we've got our bend tables as well as punch tables. Might not be aware of that, that punch table. It's one that I know I forget about. For our weldments, again, we've got weld tables to categorize those, revision tables that we can specify on, on our drawings, and just regular general tables, which are nothing more than cells that we can specify. Now, there is a bit of an outlier here, design tables. If you do a lot of configurations and you're familiar with design tables, you can put those on your drawings as well. So I've got this group of tables on the left, and then I have specifically design tables on the right. Uh, you might be wondering, why did I do that? Well, the tables on the left, those are all what I'll refer to as native SOLIDWORKS functionality. So the table engine, table command inside of SOLIDWORKS to generate all of those tables. Those tables on the left, all the modifications the adding, the editing, the saving, you know, a couple of the things that I'll show here in the next 15 or so minutes, they're really applicable to all of them. So I'll spend most of my time working with a bill of materials. Just again, it's a table, they all behave the same. Now design tables, they are completely different. So everything that we do uh, to kind of configure and set up the tables on the left, they don't work for design tables because they are essentially just an Excel spreadsheet. So I'll show a brief example about you know, what we need to do to hopefully get those design tables on our drawing sheets and, and look a little bit better. So again, I'm going to go through some of the table basics. I hope most of this is, is common knowledge. I just maybe want to point out a few things that you might not be aware of. Did you know you can have a table on your, or a title for your table, excuse me? Uh, we've got anchor points. They've been around in SOLIDWORKS. I'll say forever, as long as I can remember using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, they don't get used that much anymore because the tables, they snap pretty good to our drawing borders, but I say pretty good because they don't always go exactly where we need them to go, and they are not locked there. An anchor point can help. 
Uh, hope you know how to add new fields, new cells, uh, columns across the top, rows in the uh, horizontal orientation, easy to do. Of course, if you add that stuff, I'll show you an example of hiding and showing both the rows and the columns. One that commonly gets overlooked, whenever I show this, people are a little bit confused on that or just didn't know you could do it. You can actually adjust the table border. You can put a nice thick border around it or any cell that you want to highlight and all caps. Uh, no, I'm not yelling, but I just wanted to put that in there because that's some new functionality for SOLIDWORKS 2018. Yes, I know that you know we're not on 2018 anymore. I'm going to show examples in 2019 and 2020 is just released, but it gets forgotten or a lot of people aren't aware of that. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS here quickly. Again, I'm going to spend most of my time kind of showing these examples with just a good old bill of materials, but don't forget, it's what I'm going to show is really applicable to all of them. So we can drop in that, that bill of materials, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time going through every single nuance about the bill of materials. I could probably have just a webcast that covers only the bill of materials, uh, but I'm just going to do a basic top-level bomb. For now, I'm going to forego the attached to anchor point. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But really, I just want to get a table onto the drawing sheet. So pretty straightforward, select the view. We have the table, go ahead and click and place it. So let's talk a little bit about that anchor point. I like to place the table in there first. Again, you know, you can grab that little triad or crossing symbol to drag the table around. That can be a little bit tricky. So here's a tip. If you hold down the Alt key, notice the cursor changes from an Excel looking icon to just that blue cross. If you Alt drag, you can just simply move a table anywhere. I find it consider considerably easier than moving my mouse to that upper left hand corner. Um, but the reason I'm moving it around here is just to show, you know, sure enough, they snap to the border, but it's not attached. So we can leverage this attached to anchor point. Again, as soon as I click it, you'll notice the table snaps to that upper left hand corner. I'm going to hold down Alt and drag it. It's not going to move around. Now, what if you don't want the anchor point in the upper left hand corner? So I'll deselect that, move my table away. And uh, just to point out, if you expand your sheet format over in the Drawing Property Manager, you're going to have a number of anchors. And if we mouse over these, you can see this upper left hand corner is typically what's specified as the anchor in a default SOLIDWORKS drawing. If you would like to change the anchor for any of them, you'll have to do this individually. But we can right click, set the anchor, temporarily takes us into edit sheet format mode, and maybe I would like the anchor for my bill of materials in the lower left hand corner just because. Now we'll give ourselves a bit of room, we'll attach to the anchor, and now the bomb snaps to that again lower left hand corner. Doesn't look too good, so of course we can leverage these various orientation buttons, top left, bottom left. That's probably the most appropriate out of, out of all of those. So again, might not use them, might not need them, but every once in a while it is nice to anchor, anchor your table there. The other thing that I want to mention with this example is the title. Now titles are hidden by default, and this is one of those things in my experience is you really have to know where to click just to show it. And it's these little icons right there that don't have a tool tip that really have no indication that they do anything. But if you click on that, there's the title. And of course, you can double click on that and change the title to whatever you think it should be. So any of the tables, you know, they really work the exact same way. So pretty easy to get that information in there. Adding and removing information. Don't forget everything in these kind of integrated SOLIDWORKS tables, it's all done with a right click. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a column to the right of the cell I've selected. Initially they are going to be linked to the custom file properties of the model, but you can bring in units of measure or equations. Don't know why it jumped, so I'll bring it back here. I bumped the mouse. I'll talk about equations in a little bit. We've got some item number, part number, you know, things that are very unique uh, and specific to the bill of materials. But maybe I just want to bring in a custom property. Maybe I would like to bring in, I don't know, down here at the bottom, we've got the weight. So 
doesn't look like too many of my components have a, uh, have a mass property defined within them. Um, so that one's pretty common to see again. You can do that anytime you want. Insert, I'll say column to the left now, and uh, let's bring in the material. And we can see, wow, surprise, surprise, the few, the few components that have materials actually have a mass defined with them. So really easy to add this information in there. You can also take your cells and just simply drag, drag and drop them to reorder. Notice the weight in the material is uh, kind of snapping the place there. Any of these cells, I'm going to right-click hide the column, right-click again. So I hope you're noticing uh, a sequence here. Everything is, again, right-click. Uh, once you hide something, then you have this show column and it gets this nice blue uh, highlighting there and you can just kind of click things to hide show and, and manage it really however you need to. So hopefully not too hidden, but just a couple of things that uh, tends to uh, pose many questions. Uh, something else I want to briefly talk about here in my bomb that really doesn't look too good uh, is the table border. So the table border can be added a couple of different ways. If we select the table itself and we go over to the property manager, these tend to be, in my experience, overlooked. But we can go ahead and adjust the thickness, maybe 2.35 millimeters. When I click out of it, you can see the, uh, the table gets a little bit of a thicker border. Let's disconnect that anchor point and we'll bring it up here. Now, a lot of users are aware about that. Um, but something that gets lost, again, is you can actually adjust the border of an individual cell or a group of cells. So, for example, this merge cell, I can select on it. And on the formatting toolbar, there's a little border edit icon. Turn on border edit, and then I could select individual entities and change the borders that way. So, if I, want, if I would like the title to kind of pop a little bit, maybe I would like these cells to do the same, just for an example. I'm just going to mouse select, hold down the left mouse button and select all of those. Again, we could use this border edit and it'll kind of merge that lower group of entities for me and we can increase the thickness of those as well. So maybe if I would like the table like that and I could do the same thing with these vertical cell elements. And now I've changed my mind. I no longer want to show the, the, bomb, uh, the bomb title, but notice what happened and this is this is something you have to watch. So I've hidden the cells that had the upper portion of the bomb table uh, shaded or kind of thickened. So just kind of watch that. If you do things like this, kind of adjust your order. You may have to come in up above and it's very hard to see, but I'm actually clicking on that upper edge or that upper line of the table, excuse me, and, uh, and increasing that as well. So a couple different ways to do that, but just watch that. That's something that I see happen quite a bit. And the last thing I want to show with this example, I'll select the cross to get into the options and clear down in the lower left hand corner is the all uppercase. So one click of the button, you can go ahead and make your tables lowercase, uppercase, and it'll work out pretty nicely for you. Now this all uppercase option is something that is controlled by the document properties. We'll get into the document properties real quick and happens to be right here on the first page so it's easy to find. If you didn't know where it was, don't forget you can search the options. Works really, really well. Much better than hunting and pecking that I tend to fall into. But we can see all uppercase for tables and I could tick that on and adjust the exclusion list with, which currently includes unit prefixes or um, abbreviations, excuse me. So a couple things that you know, might help your tables kind of stand out a little bit more. But this applies to every single table, even though I really only highlighted the functionality in a SolidWorks bill of materials. So a couple of what I would consider the basics. So a couple other things about table editing, and I'll, I'll use another bill of materials example about this, is how do you control the part number, really any property? Um, it's actually quite easy to do inside of SOLIDWORKS. Saving your tables as either a table template, bomb template, uh, Weldment cut list template, et cetera, et cetera, or an Excel spreadsheet. Again, very, very easy to do. 
But no matter what, whenever I talk about saving anything, I must talk about file locations. This question comes up uh, quite a bit. Uh, all the table templates, and I'll bring up Windows Explorer to show this, they are in the SOLIDWORKS install directory, whatever your major release is, SOLIDWORKS, Lang, in English. So it's one of those folders that is buried, and it can be major release uh, specific, so keep, uh, keep an eye on that. And then, maybe you are aware about this, maybe you're not, but it's very easy to add equations in our, in our tables, as well as there's some very interesting sorting capabilities that we have within our SOLIDWORKS tables. So we'll jump Windows again. I'm going to leverage the um, kind of SOLIDWORKS home screen. I don't know if you, any of you use this, but recent documents, really easy way to jump around and pinning the files in, in there makes it really easy to open these up. But here we can see I've already added a bill of materials. But if we take a look at the part number, the part number is currently called Table Practice 001. And by default, SOLIDWORKS uses the file name for the quote unquote part number. But I'm going to go ahead and right click and open that part up. See, it's a little weldment frame. Go over to the Configuration Manager. And like many things in SOLIDWORKS drawings, even though I'm trying to only focus on tables, we have to talk a little bit about parts and part properties in order to get that information to show effectively. I'm going to right click on the configuration and choose properties and talk just briefly about this bill of materials option. Uh, even if your part does not have multiple configurations for here, uh, in this example, I'm just modifying the default. If you want to control what the part number is, you can either specify it as configuration or user specified name. Really easy way to get what you want in the table without redefining anything or renaming it. So my part number is going to be 123456789. Yes, I know, not creative at all, but we'll see the change when we not alt tab. How about we try control tab? That's a little bit better hotkey combination within the application. And sure enough, there's the new part number. Now you don't always need to go over to the model. You can actually simply double click on these. And sometimes, uh, in my experience, maybe in a class or on tech support, individuals get very concerned about doing anything here. Uh, this, is, this is very powerful functionality because if we say keep the link, Anything we type in will update the file properties of, in this case, item number two. Now, if we break the link and we type in whatever we want, it's just simple text. But if we delete the simple text, the software will reestablish the link for us. That's this note part right there. This is one of those windows that be very careful about the don't show again. Because if you do don't show again and, for instance, hit break link, SOLIDWORKS remembers that setting, and that will be the default setting moving forward over and over and over. So just watch any dialog box in SOLIDWORKS that says don't show again, because it will remember your choice, and sometimes you, you, know, you don't want it to remember, the, remember your choice. So we'll say keep the link, and this part number, there, an even more ridiculous part number. We'll click out of it. Everything looks like that. Right click, open the part. It's now called table practice point zero zero two. Switch over to the configuration. And I just want to highlight it right here. There you can see that silly part number, that silly information there. Right click properties and the software switches it for us automatically. So uh, again, very, very easy to control these part numbers or really any property. And we'll see that here in, in just a moment. Any property can be can be modified. So let's work with this table just a little bit more. Uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, maybe add in a little bit of additional information. We're going to right click insert a column to the right and let's bring in some vendor information. So we're making a change to the table and while it's not too significant, it is a change. Um, just do a little rebuild. You'll see the colors of the frame come back. Not sure why I get that graphical glitch in WebEx, but I did there. Um, but this is now the new table that I would like my quote-unquote company to use 
always moving forward. Item number, part number, description, vendor, quantity. Really easy to make, these make this as a new template. Right click, save as at the very bottom. You can save it as either a table template, we'll call it the new bomb. Not very creative, I know, but it'll get the point across here, hopefully. You want to make sure that those are saved in the correct location. What I've done is I've pinned the folder here in the, the quick links in Windows 10. So you can see it's in my C drive, program files, my SOLIDWORKS install directory, SOLIDWORKS language in English. So again, very much buried. And we can see these are all individual SOLIDWORKS bill of material templates. So we'll save that. Like I've got some weird permissions going on my screen or on my computer. I have to love Windows 10 and its high level of security, so I guess I'll save it on my desktop for now. And we'll just do that one more time. Right-click, Save As. Save it as Excel. And we'll just say Excel out. So really easy to get this data outside of SolidWorks. Takes a moment for the Excel file to save but we will go to the desktop here. And there we can see. So again, easy to get this information out. It remembers the exact order. Everything is, is exactly as you would expect it to be. So let's do a little bit more work with this particular uh, bill of materials table. So even though I simply added the vendor in there, let's add a little bit more. Let's Let's insert a column to the right, and we're going to change that custom property. Let's bring in the weight. Now, there's a number of components that don't have a weight. So let's add, uh, let's see what's going on there. Let's fix it. So let's open up this washer. And again, right click, open that washer up. And okay, it, it does have a material defined with it, plain carbon steel. That, that works for me. But that material property or that information isn't showing up over in the bill of materials. So we'll go into the file properties and let's specify that weight. We want to link that to the mass of the part. So very easy to get that, that property information in there. We'll say, okay, a real quick control tab. And there we can see that weight in there. But notice it didn't adjust for the flat washer right there. Well, what I failed to, to, uh, to notice is, well, this is a part that has configurations. Uh, if you weren't aware, individual configurations can have their own material properties. This part or this configuration has what I jokingly say, and it's a bad joke, has the most common material in SOLIDWORKS, the material named not specified. But I'm just going to right click on it and say configure the material here and make sure that all configurations for this part are specified as plain carbon steel. And we can apply an OK. And that should take care of that other configuration. Uh, I need to add a configuration specific property in there as well, which, which I haven't done, so I'll fix that. But let's, let's take a look at these fasteners right here. We'll go ahead and we'll say open that up. We'll do the same thing. We're going to configure the material. And some of these configurations have the material in there. Some have a different material. I'm just going to make sure that they are all set to that plain carbon steel. Go ahead and apply that and specify, again, a property. So here we can see the individual configurations that I'm working on the configuration specific property. They will override the custom properties. I'm going to flip it back over to custom. Uh, that way this will go to uh, everything in the part. So we'll say mass, OK. Save it, close it. There we go. So that's the workflow I should have used for the M6 washer. Now, why am I going through all of this? Well, just to show you that if you don't have exactly what you need in your parts, in your tables, much of it is always defined in the SOLIDWORKS part properties, configuration specific properties, or custom properties. 
everything is driven off of the properties for our tables. So um, many different table types are going to require you to go back over to the modeling environment and kind of clean everything up. So again, why am I doing all of this? Because one thing that I want to talk about are equations. So in order to make a somewhat interesting equation, I've specified the weight column and the quantity column, and now I would like to add in a column to kind of sum all of that information. So we can say insert column to the right, and instead of a custom property, we're just going to leave it as is. I'm going to click that cell header and choose the sigma symbol for an equation. Equation is very, very easy to create. A lot of this functionality, you just need to know where to click, in my experience. So we're going to say, let's make an equation for the weight, and we'll just put a little multiplication symbol off of the number pad, and then the column of quantity, I have no idea why it's in there four times, possibly this, uh, this assembly probably has a configuration. Adjust the precision accordingly, and green checkbox OK. And there you go, SOLIDWORKS will sum that. I have to double check why I have precision of two, yet there are three decimal points there. Uh, maybe I made a mistake with my, my precision there. Nope, quantity two. I'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on. But anyhow, there's uh, a couple other ways that you can control that information. The whole idea here is very easy to add those equations in there. And I could add in a second or a final row at the bottom and then do a full sum everything in column G and get it all set up. So the last thing I want to show with this particular example is sorting the table. Notice I've got a number of vendors and it's kind of a hodgepodge, they're all over the place. I would really like it if I could order all the vendors, you know, sequentially or ascending and descending order. Well, that's done with the sorting functionality. Right click on your table, select sort, and let's first sort by that vendor, and then by um, maybe another property, such as the part number. You could have a tertiary uh, sort as well, but this will get everything done nicely, say OK, and we can see it's now Acme Browning, all the Fastenal components, so on and so forth. And now we could take all of these, and we will just shift select all the Fastenal components, and drag item 11 down to the bottom, and reorganize that bill of materials. So there's quite a bit of sorting and editing and things like that that you can do all with the right mouse button yet again. Even though I used a bomb, don't forget, it's applicable to all the SOLIDWORKS tables. So whole tables, I want to briefly go through those. They have a few unique elements to them. Uh, when we're categorizing all the holes on a part, you can see we have this nice table. One of the things that gets lost in it is the ability to redefine the datum. At least I always forget how to do it. So we'll jump back into SOLIDWORKS and bring up a real quick example to talk about our whole tables. Very straightforward to create. We'll choose that whole table category. Again, choose your appropriate template. That's what this little button right here is for, browse for a template. You can see where it takes us, back to that C drive, SOLIDWORKS install directory, language, English. If you're going to work with your tables, I would highly recommend just taking that path and creating a shortcut or, you know, pin current folder to quick access. Makes it pretty easy to get in and out of there but we'll just use that regular standard. Uh, let's do numbers this time and we'll say open. Again, we've got anchor points, um, but we're gonna skip all of that and go right down to the datum and specify either an, an edge for the X and Y axis, or we can just specify a vertex. Now you do need to specify the edges or the faces that you want the software to itemize for your whole table. So we could select individual circular edges if we would like. Or we could right click and clear and just simply choose that face and say OK. And SOLIDWORKS will grab everything on that for us. It tends to make a quite large table. So we can see we've got the tags, we've got the X location, the Y location starting from 
you know, the lower left-hand corner of the part. Maybe that's appropriate, maybe it's not. If it's not, select that datum. Here we can see edit datum definition over in the left property manager. And we could re-specify or redefine that possibly to the center of that uh, circular edge right there. So really easy to do. Again, if you know where to click, just click on that datum. There, I missed it. There, I got it. And then that edit datum definition. So you've got a ton of information in this table, and it can be a little bit uh, overwhelming. But we've got some options to control the, the, the order. These are newer options down here, reduced tool path and the radial. Those were introduced, I believe, in SOLIDWORKS 2019. I'm going to get a huge difference in those. You can see some of them change down here below, but this is a very symmetric part. Um, but it'll just change the order of how it puts, puts those in there as if it was going to uh, um, machine them or something like that. I'm just going to come down here and say, let's put it back to XY. Let's say combine the same sizes. You know, that cleans that, that table up nicely. And I would recommend just take a look at a lot of these options in order to get you know, what you need as far as your table is concerned. Uh, also with 2019 and whole tables, there's some additional functionality if you right click to, you know, renumber, renumber series, things like that. So uh, quite a bit of editing when you get into some of this, uh, some of this functionality here. But again, just right mouse button like all the other tables. What we want to do here, as you can see, the table's a little bit too big. Just right click and split, and we'll say split horizontally above this selection. So it'll just make a nice little mini table that you can then drag around and, and reposition wherever you need it to go. And you can split as many times as you need to. This is one of those cases where, there we go, now I grabbed it, and I can position it exactly where it needs to go. Not quite as appropriate as maybe it should be, but any table can be split further split and then split again. You can right click and then simply merge, merge the tables and it'll put it right back together. So pretty easy to work with. Again, real quick example, just wanted to show a couple of the unique elements of, of some of these other tables that we can create inside of our drawings. Weldments, again, extremely automatic if you use the structural members functionality. Um, but what about plates? And by plates, I'm referring to as the feet for my weldment, end caps. Maybe you've modeled in some gussets or any extruded boss. Uh, it's not always that automatic, at least uh, well, until you know where to click. So here's my, my little weldment frame. You can see here, it's a little bit small. So I'm going to go down to the lower right-hand corner to the scale switcher. Let's go to 1 to 5. I like my drawings view shaded when I'm presenting, so we'll say shaded with edges. And we'll select that view and just simply say a weldment cut list. And similar options that we've seen over and over and over, so we will say OK. And there's our cut list, and this is what I was trying to comment on. Structural members, extremely automatic. All that descriptive information is there. The plates. Let's add in a couple of balloons here real quick. There you can see there's item five, there's item six, and there's really no reason I'm using manual balloons over auto balloons. It's just the button that I happen to click. But you can see structural members, all that data is there. Plates, not so much. Let's open this part up and kind of see where this information is coming from. Of course, it's the weldment cut list, and we can right click on any of those properties and get in there. And we can see for the structural members, all that description information. It's derived from the profile sketches, so it's there for us. These are just extruded bosses. Software understands quantities, but not much else. So this is something you can do. And this is a little bit newer functionality. If I recall, 2017 is when they introduced this. I could be wrong. It might be 2018. I'd have to double check. But if you take really anything in SOLIDWORKS now, right click, you create a bounding box. So this bounding box is just a little rectangular prismatic sketch for the volume. But what's really nice about that is if we right click and go to the properties of that entity, all this data is created automatically for us. 
this 3D bounding box, length, width, height, volumetric calculation, but also SOLIDWORKS automatically generates that description property for us. So you can see it's the plate, thickness, width, and length. So where does that come from? Well, let's go into the options, document properties, and weldments. So this bounding box information. So you can deselect that, you can change what's in this field, the order, you know, really customize it that works best for you if these are the types of tables you need to create. So I'm gonna leave everything as is, but just understand document properties, weldments, add your bounding boxes, and now SOLIDWORKS will do all of that heavy lifting for you. So right click, create bounding box. We'll say right click properties, and there's cut list item six. We can preview the table here. All that information is for us. So really not much to show with a table specifically, more about where to go at in the part model to help your table um, be more complete. It's really what it's about with this example. And last but not least, design tables. So these are the outliers of the few things I'm talking about. They are Excel files, you know, just an Excel spreadsheet, an OLE object. And because of that, none of the previous techniques that I've shown apply to them. They really have none of the options. They always, in my experience, need some formatting help, sometimes a considerable amount of formatting help. So again, we'll jump back into SOLIDWORKS. We'll shut down the weldment files, and let's open up a little model I have of a 62 series ball bearing. A perfect example for a model with configurations and sure enough I've got a handful of configurations and a design table so if you do an edit table it loads Excel up inside of your SOLIDWORKS window you can also use the edit in a new window but I'm afraid that's going to jump to a screen you guys cannot see on WebEx the reason I'm doing this is what you see is what you get so if your table is giant like mine on the screen that's exactly what we're going to see over in SOLIDWORKS. So, select the view, insert a design table, and there it comes. And you can see it's just floating over everything. Uh, it doesn't snap to anything. This just resizes the OLE object, so it goes from, you know, can't see it to microscopic. So what do you need to do? Well, you can double click on it jumps us back over to the part environment and we need to make this look nicer. So use your Excel uh, skill set. Let's grab the cells and bump the text up so hopefully we can see it. We need a little bit of work on the cells themselves. You know, we could hide information that we don't want to see. That's not at all what we wanted to do. And now my design table just went from bad to worse. If I rebuild it, let's see if it, it remembers some of the changes that I've made. So yeah, you gotta watch out with this. So there, there we go. So what you see is what you get. I accidentally clicked out of the design table there and just, you know, just be, be careful with that. And it looks like I've hidden everything in my in my design table, so the quickest way, we are going to say goodbye and we'll reopen that here quickly. So a prime example of the outlier functionality and behavior you get with an Excel design table. So even if you get into the right click, not much you can do. So we're gonna say edit with worksheet, let it load, and need to make, make our changes to it. I've got a giant Excel window now, but again, it's all about making the changes, making it look a little bit better, adjusting the fonts so we can actually see it, adjusting the cell sizes, 
rebuilding here real quick. And some of it looks good, but some of it still does not. You can see it's kind of floating off of the screen. And you do need to be careful. You need to close Excel down so it actually gets saved so you can get your SOLIDWORKS session back. I'm going to double click on it. You do need to edit it within the SOLIDWORKS window to do this next step. Be very careful, but drag this, the window. So what you see, again, is what you get. So these extra cells will be shown. That's probably, yeah, that's what I want. So resize the Excel window, click into your SOLIDWORKS part window, we'll control tab over into my drawing, control B, hotkey to rebuild it, go through its whole rebuild cycle, everything like that, and that should give us a much more legible design table. Of course, there's more you can do with it, but I'm as I tend to do, tend to go a little bit long with what I like to talk about. And a bonus piece of information, just because I noticed it. Notice that text doesn't fit. We're going to right-click Edit Sheet Format, double-click that note, and use the Fit Text option on the Formatting Toolbar. And you can just kind of crunch that note down so it fits a little bit better. doesn't really adjust the font. It just adjusts how it's being rendered on the screen, and our notes also could have that uppercase option if we chose to use it. So those are the few things that I wanted to mention. Um, I'll leave it with this. You know, are there any tips that any of you have that you've come across with leveraging tables in SOLIDWORKS? Most of them are very, very easy to work with. As you can see there, the design tables can be a little bit cumbersome. So if you have any tips or you have any questions about tables, things that you've run into, I definitely did not cover everything with tables inside of SOLIDWORKS, just picked a few things that I get lots of questions about. Um, send them in. That's my email address. would love to hear from uh, anybody on that. And with all of that said and done, I will say thank you very much for your attendance.